What do you know about medieval medicine practices? What is fact and what is fiction? The medieval period, often referred to as the Middle Ages, spans roughly from the 5th to the late 15th century. This era, characterized by feudalism, the rise of monasticism, and significant socio-political changes, also saw the development of medical practices that were deeply rooted in the philosophies and cultural beliefs of the time. The popular image of medieval medicine is often one of ignorance, superstition, and rudimentary practices. However, while some aspects of medieval medicine were indeed based on now discredited theories, the era also witnessed notable advancements and practices that laid the foundation for modern medicine. This essay explores the realities and misconceptions of medieval medicine, contrasting the factual practices with common fictional portrayals. The Foundation of Medieval Medicine The foundation of medieval medicine was heavily influenced by the writings of ancient Greek and Roman physicians, particularly Hippocrates and Galen. Their works were rediscovered and translated into Latin during the medieval period, forming the basis of medical education in medieval Europe. The theory of the four humors, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile, proposed by Hippocrates and later expanded by Galen, dominated medical thought. According to this theory, the balance of these humors in the body determined a person's health and temperament. Treatments often aimed at restoring this balance through various means, such as bloodletting, diet, and purging. Fact, the four humors theory was central to medieval medical practice. Physicians believed that illness resulted from an imbalance of these humors and sought to restore balance through specific treatments. Fiction. A common misconception is that medieval medicine was entirely unscientific and based purely on superstition. While some treatments were indeed based on folklore and superstition, many medieval medical practices were grounded in the scientific knowledge available at the time, albeit limited and sometimes misguided by modern standards medical education and practitioners. During the medieval period, medical education was primarily conducted in universities and monastic schools. The University of Salerno, often cited as the first medical school in medieval Europe, became a center for medical teaching and scholarship. Texts such as the Articella served as key medical textbooks, compiling knowledge from various ancient sources. Physicians were generally well-educated often requiring a university degree to practice. However, not all medical practitioners were formally trained. The medical landscape included barber surgeons, apothecaries, and folk healers, each serving different roles in society. Fact, there was a structured system of medical education and licensing for physicians in medieval Europe. Universities played a significant role in disseminating medical knowledge and physicians often held a respected status in society. Fiction The notion that all medieval medical practitioners were ignorant and untrained is misleading. While formal medical education was not accessible to all, many practitioners had considerable knowledge and experience. Furthermore, the practice of medicine was not exclusively dominated by superstitions and unqualified individuals. Common Medical Practices Medieval medical practices included a wide range of treatments, from herbal remedies to surgical procedures. One of the most infamous practices was bloodletting, based on the belief that removing excess blood could restore the balance of humors. This practice was performed using lancets or specialized tools called fleems, and sometimes involved the use of leeches. Other common treatments included the use of herbal medicines, dietary regulations, and purgatives. Fact, bloodletting was indeed a common practice in medieval medicine, based on the prevailing humoral theory. Herbal remedies were also widely used, with many plants being recognized for their medicinal properties. Fiction, the idea that medieval medicine relied solely on extreme measures like bloodletting and lacked any effective treatments is inaccurate. While some methods were harmful, others, particularly herbal remedies, could be beneficial. Medieval medicine also included a significant amount of practical knowledge, particularly in areas like cuts lacerations and the treatment of fractures. Surgery and anatomical knowledge Surgery in the medieval period was generally considered a last resort due to the risks involved and the limited knowledge of human anatomy. However, 
there were notable surgical practices and advancements. Surgeons, who were often distinct from university-trained physicians, performed procedures such as trepanation, drilling into the skull to treat head injuries or neurological conditions, amputation, and the removal of bladder stones. Despite the lack of anesthetics, medieval surgeons developed techniques to manage pain and prevent infection, such as using cautery or applying herbal concoctions. Anatomical knowledge in the Middle Ages was limited and primarily based on the works of ancient authors like Galen. Dissections were rare and often restricted to animals, as human dissection was controversial and, at times, prohibited by religious authorities. This limited direct observation of human anatomy led to a reliance on outdated and sometimes inaccurate anatomical texts. Fact, medieval surgeons performed a range of surgical procedures and had practical knowledge in treating wounds and fractures. They also developed tools and techniques for surgery, although these were often rudimentary compared to modern standards. Fiction The belief that medieval medicine was entirely devoid of anatomical knowledge is incorrect. While there were significant limitations, medieval practitioners did possess some understanding of anatomy, particularly through practical experience and the study of classical texts, plagues, and public health. The medieval period was marked by several devastating plagues, most notably the Black Death in the 14th century. This pandemic, caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, led to widespread mortality and had profound social and economic impacts. Medieval responses to the plague included quarantine measures, the isolation of the sick, and the use of protective clothing by doctors, such as the iconic plague doctor masks filled with aromatic substances. Public health measures in the medieval period were rudimentary but not entirely absent. For instance, some cities implemented sanitation regulations, such as the disposal of waste and the maintenance of clean water supplies. Monastic communities also played a role in public health, with some monasteries operating hospitals that provided care for the sick and poor. Fact, the Black Death prompted various public health responses, including quarantine and the use of protective clothing. There was also an awareness of the importance of cleanliness and sanitation in preventing disease spread. Fiction It is a misconception that medieval society had no understanding of public health measures. While limited by the scientific knowledge of the time, medieval people did practice forms of disease prevention and control, such as isolating the sick and maintaining clean living environments. Magic, religion, and medicine. The relationship between magic, religion, and medicine in the medieval period was complex. While modern perceptions often associate medieval medicine with superstition, in reality, there was a nuanced interplay between religious beliefs, magical practices, and empirical treatments. Many medieval medical practitioners, including university-trained physicians, incorporated religious and magical elements into their practice. This included the use of charms, amulets, and prayers, often alongside more conventional treatments. The church played a significant role in the development and regulation of medicine. Monasteries were centers of medical knowledge, with monks copying and preserving medical texts. The church also ran hospitals and cared for the sick, viewing this as a charitable duty. However, the church's stance on certain medical practices, such as dissection, could be restrictive, limiting the advancement of anatomical knowledge. Fact, religion and magic were integral to medieval medicine, with many practitioners incorporating these elements into their treatments. The church played a dual role in supporting and regulating medical practices. Fiction, the portrayal of medieval medicine as solely reliant on magic and superstition, overlooks the empirical and practical aspects of medical practice. While mystical elements were present, they often coexisted with more scientific approaches to treatment and care. Women in Medieval Medicine Women played a significant role in medieval medicine, particularly in the realm of domestic health care and midwifery. Female healers, often referred to as wise women or herb women, provided medical care within their communities using herbal remedies and traditional knowledge. Women also served as midwives, responsible for assisting in childbirth and providing postpartum care. In some regions, women could practice as professional medical practitioners, 
although they often faced legal and societal restrictions. The role of women in medicine varied across Europe and was influenced by local customs, laws, and religious attitudes. In some areas, women were allowed to train as physicians or surgeons, while in others, they were restricted to roles that were considered extensions of their domestic duties. The medical knowledge of women healers was often transmitted orally and through apprenticeship, rather than through formal education. Fact, women were active participants in medieval medicine, particularly in the areas of midwifery and herbalism. They provided essential healthcare services within their communities. Fiction, the belief that women were entirely excluded from the practice of medicine in the medieval period is incorrect. While they faced restrictions, women played a crucial role in healthcare, and their contributions were significant, particularly in the areas of midwifery and herbal medicine. Influences and Legacy Medieval medicine was influenced by a wide range of sources, including ancient Greek and Roman texts, Arabic medical knowledge, and local folk traditions. The translation of Arabic medical texts into Latin during the medieval period introduced European practitioners to advanced medical theories and practices, such as those of Avicenna and Al-Razi. These texts provided new insights into anatomy, pharmacology, and surgery, significantly enriching medieval medical knowledge. The legacy of medieval medicine is complex. While many medieval medical theories and practices have been discredited, the period also laid important foundations for the development of modern medicine. The establishment of medical schools, the professionalization of medical practice, and the preservation and transmission of classical medical knowledge were all significant achievements of the medieval period. The influence of medieval medicine extended beyond Europe. The Crusades facilitated the exchange of medical knowledge between the East and West, introducing Europeans to new medical practices and ideas. This exchange of knowledge contributed to the broader development of medical science and helped to shape the Renaissance and the subsequent scientific revolution. Fact, medieval medicine was influenced by a diverse range of sources and contributed to the development of modern medical practices. The period saw significant advancements in medical education, surgery, and pharmacology. Fiction, the portrayal of medieval medicine as entirely backward and unscientific overlooks the era's contributions to the history of medicine. While some practices were based on now discredited theories, medieval medicine also included empirical knowledge and practical treatments that were effective for their time. Conclusion The study of medieval medicine reveals a complex and multifaceted picture. While the period was characterized by beliefs and practices that may seem primitive by modern standards, it also saw the development of significant medical knowledge and practices. The era's medical practitioners, whether university-trained physicians, barber surgeons, or wise women, contributed to the care and treatment of the sick with the tools and knowledge available to them. The legacy of medieval medicine is evident in the continued use of herbal remedies, the structure of medical education, and the professionalization of the medical field. It serves as a reminder that the history of medicine is a continuous journey, marked by both breakthroughs and misconceptions. Understanding medieval medicine requires an appreciation of the context in which it developed and the limitations and challenges faced by practitioners of the time. In dispelling the myths and misconceptions surrounding medieval medicine, we gain a deeper understanding of the era's contributions to the broader history of medicine. The study of medieval medicine is not just about identifying the errors and superstitions of the past, but also about recognizing the era's efforts to heal and care for the sick. It is a testament to the enduring human quest for knowledge and the improvement of health and well-being. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, and subscribe to Medieval Chronicles 1066 for more journeys to the past. Stay curious. Thank you.